do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos The A086 microprocessor it was the first 16 bit microprocessor and it is available in a 40 pin IC means this IC A086 IC it has 40 pins and also this A086 microprocessor it is available in different clock rates so we can write here the feature of the A086 microprocessor that it is a first 16 bit microprocessor <coughs> It is a 40 pin chip and it is available in different clock rates. Like its clock rate can be 5 megahertz, 8 megahertz, or 10 megahertz. So, depending upon the clock rate value, there are various versions of this 8086 microprocessor. Now, coming to the mode of operation of the 86, uh, 8086 microprocessor, it operates in two modes. Uh, first is the maximum mode, and second is the minimum mode. Okay, so in minimum mode, the microprocessor it works as a single processor and in maximum mode it works as a multiprocessor system. So this 8086 microprocessor it can operate in single processor configuration also and in multiprocessor configuration also to achieve high performance. Now as this 8086 microprocessor it has 40 pins so these 40 pins some of the pins they can operate in either maximum mode or minimum mode or both maximum and minimum modes okay. So here we can write that uh, some of the pins they have functions which are uh, operated in the maximum mode or in the minimum mode or both the modes. So the same pin it can be used in both the modes in minimum mode also and in maximum mode also. Minimum mode is the mode in which the 8086 it operates in single processor configuration and maximum mode is the mode in which the 8086 it operates in multiprocessor configuration. So let us now study the pin diagram of 8086 microprocessor which consists of 40 pins. So let us first see the pin diagram. So this is the pin diagram of 8086 microprocessor. You can see that it has 40 pins. On one side it has 1 to 20 and on the other side it has 21 to 40 pins. And every pin is assigned a signal here. So let us see. On pin number 1 we have the VSS or the ground. From pin number 2 to pin number 16, we have the address and the data bus AD0 to AD14. Then we have AD15 here and A16, 17, 18 and 19. So the address bus, it is of 20 in the A086 microprocessor. So we have the 20 address lines starting from AD0 to A19. Okay. Then we have NMI, okay, INTR, clock. And again, VSS ground, we have 
two connections for the ground then 21 it is reset 22 ready test qs1 qs0 then s0 s1 s2 lock rq gt1 rq gt0 then rd bar minimum and maximum mode bus high enable and s7 these are the status signal s3 s4 s5 s6 and s7 then we have the vcc where the plus 5 volt power supply is connected now here you can see that two modes are described one is the maximum mode and other is the minimum mode so in the maximum mode these pins work and in minimum mode these pins 31 to 24 these pins uh, they will have these signals okay which are uh, described here written here like pin number 31 in minimum mode it will act as the hold signal 30 pin it will act as hlda hold acknowledge then write this is memory and input output operation this is data transmit and receive then this is data enable this is address latch enable and this is INTA. So these signals they will work when the 8086 it is operating in the minimum mode. In maximum mode these pins will work as RQGT not the signals which are written here. So you can see that there are some pins which have the functions in both the maximum mode and the minimum mode and some pins are there which have a particular function either in the maximum mode and the minimum mode. So now let us study the description of all the pins of the 8086 microprocessor in detail. First, we will start with the power supply signals. In the power supply signals, we have the ground and the plus 5 volt power supply. As the 8086, it operates at the uh, plus 5 volt power supply. So at the pin number 40, plus 5 volts VCC is connected and ground is available at two pins, pin number 1 and pin number 20. So for power supply signal, 8086, it uses... So 8086 it uses plus 5 volts DC supply at pin number 40 we have the VCC that is plus 5 volt connection and at pin number 1 and pin 20 they are acting as the ground okay. Then we have the frequency signals or the clock input. So clock signal or clock input it is provided by pin number 19 you can see in the pin diagram that at pin number 19 we have the clock input. Now this clock input it provides the timing signals to the processor so that uh, it can perform various operations. So here I have written that this uh, clock signal it provides timing to the processor for operations. Now 8086 it has different versions like 8086, 8086 1, 8086 2 and these versions they operate at different clock frequencies like 5 megahertz, 8 megahertz and 10 megahertz. So we can say that the operating frequency range of 8086 it is between 5 megahertz to 10 megahertz okay. Next we have the address and the data bus. The 8086 microprocessor it has 16 bit data bus and 20 bit address bus. So we can say here that it has 20 lines 
for address which are from A0 to A19 and it has 16 lines for data which are from D0 to D15. Now these address and the data burst lines, they are multiplexed with each other. So 16 data lines and 16 address lines, they will be multiplexed. So when they are multiplexed, they are collectively known as the 16 address and data lines. are multiplexed so they will be together known as AD0 to AD15 so in this uh, pin diagram you can see that we have AD0 to A14 available from pin number 16 uh, to pin number 2 and pin number 39 is also AD15 so we have AD0 to AD14 which are from pin number 2 to pin number 16 and AD15 it is available at pin number 39. Now how to differentiate that on these 16 address and data lines when address is available and when data is available. So uh, during the clock cycles of the microprocessor during the first clock cycle the address is available on these address lines and after first clock cycle data will be available So if we divide these 16 address and data lines into two 8-bit uh, lines, then AD0 to AD7, it will carry the lower order data byte. And AD8 to AD15, it will carry higher order data byte. Okay. Now during first clock cycle, address is available on these lines and after first clock cycle, data is available on these lines. So this 16 bit data it will be available at the AD0 to AD7 and AD8 to AD15 and the 20 bit address it will be obtained by combining the 16 bit uh, data lines AD0 to AD15 and then A16, A17, A18 and A19 okay. So in this way we can get the complete 20 bit address and the 16 bit data. Next we have the address and the status signals. You can see in the pin diagram that uh, the address and the data bus they were multiplexed from AD0 to AD15 and the remaining address lines they can work as uh, these pins 38 to 35 they can work as the four address lines also and as the four status signals also that is from S3, S4, S5 and S6. So here we will discuss the address and the status signals. So this is like A16 to A19 or it can either work as S3 to S6. Okay. So 
so these lines or uh, these pins they can act both as the address bus also and as the status bus also so how it will be differentiated that at what time address is available and at what time these pins are acting as the status signals so during the first clock cycle the address will be available and after the first clock cycle the status signals will be available Okay, so during the first clock cycle, we can get the complete 20 bit address by the address lines AD0 to AD15 and A16 to A19. And after the first clock cycle, the data in the address bus they will denote the they will represent the data, and the A16 to A19 lines these pins will denote carry the status signals. Okay, next we have S7 or bus high enable this signal it is available at pin number 34 you can see that we have two signals means it can act as bus high enable also and it can act as the status signal s7 also okay so let's see that what is the function of this signal this bhg it stands for bus high enable and it is available at pin number 34 So this signal bus high enable it is used to indicate the transfer of data using the data bus D18 to D15. So the higher order data byte that will be transferred by using this uh, signal bus high enable. Now this signal it is low during the first clock signal. So you can see here that it is an active low signal. So it will be active during the first clock cycle and when it is active it means that the uh, data available on the bus it is the higher order data and that has to be transferred okay so this indicates the transfer of data using the data bus and uh, this signal is low during the first clock cycle next we have the read signal this read signal it is available at pin number 32 we have rd bar and its full form is read so it is available at pin number 32 and this signal it is used to, to indicate the read operations means whenever the microprocessor it is performing the read operation then this signal is low because it is having a bar over it so it's an active low signal And this signal is used to perform the read operations. Okay, so it means that whenever this signal is active, it means that the microprocessor it is performing the read operation. Then we have ready. This ready signal it is available at pin number 22 you can see at the pin number 22 we have this ready signal now this signal is used by the microprocessors or by the uh, peripheral devices peripheral devices means the input output devices which are connected with the uh, A086 microprocessor now it happens that whenever the peripheral devices they want to communicate with the processor so the A086 it is having a very high processing speed but there are some uh, 
peripherals which do not have such high speed so if they want to cope up with the speed of the 8086 microprocessor then they send this ready signal the microprocessor wait for some time till the uh, input output devices or the peripheral devices they come to with it or they match up with its speed so at that time the microprocessor will wait for some time and uh, when the uh, input output devices they are ready for communication with the microprocessor then they send this ready signal so this ready signal it is used by the peripheral devices to indicate the microprocessor that it is ready for the transfer of data or we can say that it is ready for communication with it okay so this ready signal it is available at pin number 22 so this ready signal it is an active high signal and we can also say that it is an acknowledgement signal from the input output devices that data it is ready for uh, to be transferred means the device is ready for communication with the microprocessor and when this signal is high it indicates that device is ready for transferring the data and when this signal is low it indicates wait state wait state means that when this signal is low it means that the input output devices they are net uh, they are not ready for for communication so the microprocessor it has to wait for some time so that the input output devices they match up with its speed or they first finishes their uh, current operation and then they will perform the transfer of data with the microprocessor so when the signal is low it indicates wait state for the microprocessor so this is the ready signal so next we have the INTR signal this INTR signal it is available at pin number 18 you can see in the pin diagram at pin number 18 we have INTR the full form of this signal it is interrupt request it means that when this signal is given to the microprocessor 8086 it means that some peripheral or some input output device they want to interrupt the microprocessor means they are sending a request to interrupt the microprocessor so that microprocessor first finishes its operation and then it executes the service routine of that interrupt okay so for, we have the signal INTR this is interrupt request signal this signal is available at pin number 18 So this is an interrupt request signal INTR. Now every time the microprocessor suppose it is executing an instruction. So this instruction they will be executed in the form of clock cycles. So at the end of the last clock cycle of each instructions means when the instruction is executed and the microprocessor reaches to the last clock cycle of that instruction. Then at that last clock cycle this instruction I this uh, pin I INTR will be checked if this signal is active means this is given to the microprocessor then um, 
it means that microprocessor is interrupted and then microprocessor has to finish the execution of that instruction and then jump to the uh, location or at which the service routine of that interrupt is written okay so this signal it is checked during the last clock cycle of each instruction and when this signal is given it means that the microprocessor is interrupted at that point okay next we have nmi which is the non maskable interrupt nmi is available at pin number 17 and uh, the full form of this is non maskable interrupt this signal means that the interrupt is given to the microprocessor and the microprocessor cannot uh, mask or it cannot deny this interrupt it has to in every situation it has to execute that interrupt okay so next we have nmi non maskable interrupt it is available at pin number 17 So this is a type of interrupt which cannot be masked by the microprocessor and it is an edge triggered input which interrupts the microprocessor okay and it is available at pin number 17. Next we have the test signal. This test signal it is available at pin number 23. Here we have at pin number 23 the test signal. This is an active low signal. So this signal is available at pin number 23 and this signal is uh, like the wait state. So when this signal it is because it's an active low signal. So when this signal is low then the microprocessor it continue its execution of the instructions means it will perform and uh, it is going to operate in its normal functions okay normal mode. Now when this signal is high then the processor it has to wait for the idle state okay. So so when this signal is uh, low the execution continues in its normal way but when the signal is high then the processor has to wait for the idle state so we can say that this signal it is used when the microprocessor it is communicating with the peripheral devices where it has to wait for some time okay so this signal is just like a wait state for the microprocessor then we have mn or MX bar. This signal it is available at pin number 33. You can see here we have MN and MX bar. So when this signal uh, this signal decides that uh, whether the 8086 it is operating in the maximum mode or in the minimum mode. So when this signal it is uh, low it means that it is operating in the maximum mode and when this signal is high then it, the 8086 it is operating in the minimum mode. Minimum mode means that the processor it is in the single processor configuration and maximum mode that means the processor it is operating in the multi-processor configuration means there are several processors which are connected with each other. So it is available at pin number 33. This is for minimum and maximum mode.
so this is the minimum maximum mode signal which indicates that at in which mode the processor it is operating okay so when this is high it means minimum mode is there and when it is low it means maximum mode is there then we have INTA which is the interrupt acknowledge signal Whenever the microprocessor it is interrupted by the peripheral or some uh, input output devices so uh, in response to the interrupt request given by the peripheral devices to the processor the processor generates an output signal which is known as the interrupt acknowledgement signal. This signal means that the microprocessor has received the request of the peripheral devices that uh, they want to interrupt the microprocessor and uh, now the uh, microprocessor has received that request okay so it is kind of an acknowledgement signal So this signal it is available at pin number 24 and the microprocessor send this signal whenever it acknowledges an interrupt. Next we have the ALE signal. The full form of this signal is address latch enable. So by the name of this signal you can get an idea that this uh, signal it is used to enable the latch on the address bus okay. So the address will be available for a longer period of time and also it is used to demultiplex the address and the data buses. This ALE signal it is available at pin number 25. So this signal it is available at pin number 25 and when a positive pulse means when the signal is high uh, then each time the processor every time the processor begins any operation. So every time the microprocessor it is starting any operation like read, write. So any time uh, when any operation is started this signal is high okay and when the signal is high it indicates that a valid address is available on the address and the data bus because we have the address and the data bus as multiplexed with each other that is ad naught to ad15 so to distinguish that on these bus whether data is available or address is available this signal is used so when this signal is high it means that address is available on these buses okay so every time the microprocessor it is starting any operation like read operation write operation it needs the address of the memory location so before starting any operation a positive pulse means this signal is active high this signal will be generated okay next we have den that is data enable you can see that this den it is available at pin number 26 okay so this pin uh, these signals they are active in the minimum mode okay these ale inta which we have studied they are also applicable only in the minimum mode of operation so this is the data enable which is at pin number 26 Now this data enable signal it is used to enable the trans receiver IC8286.
so this trans receiver it is a device which can transmit the data means it can transfer the data also and it can receive the data also so whenever we want to enable the data or whenever we want to transfer or receive the data from the 8086 microprocessor then this data enable signal is used because this signal it is going to enable the 8286 trans receiver which is acting between the 8086 processor and the input output devices Also, the AD02, AD15 address and the data bus, it is carrying both the address and the data. So, if you want to separate the data from this bus, then also this trans receiver is used. So, whenever we want the data to be available, then we use this signal to enable the trans receiver IC8286. Next, we have DT or R. The full form of this is data transmit or receive. So this signal it is used to ind indicate the direction or flow of data. Means whether the data it is coming towards the 8086 or it is going out of 8086. So it is to indicate that the data transfer it is either uh, the uh, flow of data it is either towards or it, it is either outward from the 8086. So this is for data transmit or receive. This is available at pin number 27. So this signal it is used to decide the direction of flow through the trans receiver whether the data is transmitted or whether it is received. So when this signal is high it means data is transmitted and when this signal is low it means the data is received because on the received we have a bar so it means that this will be active when its value is low and this will be active when its value is high okay. <coughs> The next signal we have is MIO. So this signal it is for the memory and the input output operations means this signal will indicate that the operation performed by the 8086 it is either a memory operation or an input output operation like whether it is memory read, memory write or input output read and input output write. So this signal it is for memory and the input output operations. It is available at pin number 28. So this signal it is used to distinguish between the memory and the input output operations. When this signal is high it means that it is an input output operation and when it is low it means that it's a memory operation and it is available at pin number 28. Next we have the signal WR. This is for the write signal just like we have the read signal we have the write signal also which indicates that the operation performed by the microprocessor it's a write operation like memory write or input output write. So this WR it is available at pin number 29.
so this write signal it is used to write the data into the memory or the output device depending upon that which operation is selected okay and this signal it is an active low signal so when it is uh, zero it value is zero then only the write operation will be performed next we have hlda and hold HLDA it stands for the hold acknowledgement signal this acknowledgement signal uh, it is used when the microprocessor it is performing the communication with the DMA controller and uh, this it is an acknowledgement signal for the hold signal given by the uh, other processors so we can say that it is hold acknowledgement or this signal indicates that it uh, 8086 it has received the hold signal okay so it is just a response towards that it is available at pin number 30 and this signal indicates the acknowledges the hold signal now next we have the hold signal Now this hold signal indicates that there are some of the processors which are want to communicate with the microprocessor and they want that the microprocessor relieve the control of its buses to those processors so that the processors they can have control over the buses of 8086. So hold it is a request which is given to the 8086 that uh, the other processors they want the control of its buses like address bus data bus and the control bus it is available at pin number 31 Okay. So we can see that these two signals are for the hold signals like DMA execution. DMA it is the direct memory SS controller. We will study these two signals in detail when we study the interfacing of DMA with the 8086 microprocessor. Next we have the QS1 and QS0 signal which are the Q status signals. Now we know that uh, this uh, 8086 microprocessor it has a special feature of instruction queue means that whenever it executes any instruction then it has the quality of prefetching six instructions at a time means that the operation code of six instructions can be fetched at the uh, same time okay so these six instructions they will form a queue so what is the status of the queue that is revealed by the two signals qs1 and qs not these two signals they have different combinations and those combination they will uh, indicate different status of the queue these are available at pin number 24 and 25 So we have the conditions for uh, these two signals QS0 and QS1. First we can have 00, zero then 01, 10 and 11. So when these two signals are 00, zero, then no operation is there. No operation will be performed. When it is 01, then first byte
so in the queue we have the opcodes for the uh, instructions they will be stored so when this uh, qs0 and qs1 they are 0 1 then the first byte of the opcode will be fetched from the Q. Then if, if we have uh, 1 0 then this is going to empty the Q and if it is 1 1 means subsequent byte from the Q. Subsequent byte means first byte is already being fetched. So the byte which is next to this byte that will be fetched from the queue. So depending upon the uh, status of these two signals, the following operations will be performed. Next we have S0, S1 and S2. These three are the status signals and these status signals they uh, decide the type of operation performed by the 8086 like whether it is memory read memory write input output read input output write or it's the opcode fetch uh, cycle so all these operations they are decided by the three signals s0 s1 and s2 these are the status signals So these signals, they provide the status of the operation. And they are available at pin number 26, 27 and 28. You can see in the block diagram, we have 26, 27, 28, the three status signals S0, S1 and S2. So let us see the combination of these three signals that what the three combinations they describe the kind of operation. We have S2, S1 and S0. We can have different combinations like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 1, 1. Then we have 100, 0, 0, 101, 110 0, and 111. So three signals, they can have the eight combinations. So when it is 0, 0, 0, it means interrupt acknowledgement. Means the processor, it is going to acknowledge the interrupt and it is going to generate the INTA signal. Okay, then we have 001, so that will be an input output read, means the operation performed by the microprocessor will be an input output read. It is going to read the data from an input output device. Then 010, it is input output write. 011, it will be the halt state. 100, it is opcode fetch. 101 memory read 110 memory write and 111 it is passive so these eight combinations they decide that which is the status or which is the type of operation performed by the microprocessor next we have the signals lock you can see that in the block diagram we have at pin num uh, in this pin diagram we have the uh, pin number 29 as the lock signal so this lock signal it indicates that the microprocessor it has locked its buses means like the other input output and the peripheral devices they cannot have a control over its buses okay so this uh, signal it indicates that the other processor they should not ask the microprocessor for the control of its buses it is available at pin number 29 
So this lock signal it indicates other processors not to ask the CPU to leave the system bus. Now how this signal is activated? This signal can be activated by writing the prefix lock at uh, in front of every instruction. So we can write the lock prefix on any instruction. So the next signals we have are the RQ, GT1 and RQ, GT0. These are the request and the grant signals. So we can have the request and grant first, then we have request and the grant uh, zero signals. So we can write here, we have the request and grant signals. So whenever the microprocessor uh, means whenever other processors or the peripheral devices they want to communicate they are sending some requests to the microprocessor that they want the control of its buses. Now in response to that request the microprocessor it generates the grant signals that it has granted uh, the request it has accepted the request and it has granted that the other processors or the peripheral devices they can have a control over its system buses okay so whenever uh, the peripheral devices they are communicating they send these request signals and in respect to these uh, request signals microprocessor issues the grant signals So when uh, the processors they are going to request the CPU to release the control of the system bus and when this uh, request is received by the CPU it sends the acknowledgement means it is going to send the grant signal okay. Now uh, suppose that uh, two input output devices they want to communicate at the same time so two requests will be generated so how to decide the priority the priority is decided that RQ and GT0 it has the highest priority or higher priority than RQ and GT1 So first this uh, first the system buses will be given to the uh, processor which is connected at this uh, GT node and then at GT1 okay. So in the pin diagram we have seen that uh, we have studied all the pins we have uh, first we studied the power signals like VSS and the VCC then we studied the address and the data bus then the address and status signals then uh, we studied the ready res, reset test QS0 QS1 and uh, the status signals also there then NMI INTR non-maskable interrupt, interrupt request, clock signals. Then we have the, uh, the pin number 31 and two pin number 24. These pins they have dual functions means they can work as uh, uh, in the minimum mode also their function is different and in maximum mode their function is different. Now if we want to relate it with the signal diagram of 8086 then we can see that uh, this is the signal diagram and uh, if we relate it with the pin diagram we have the power signals VCC ground here connected okay then we have the clock input here then we have interrupt interface signals means signals which are related with the interrupt operation of 8086 so for interrupt we have the INTR then INTA signal non-maskable interrupt and the test signal then reset signal it is used to clear the contents of or to restart the execution of 
8086 okay then we have hold an hlda which are used when for the dma interface whenever the 8086 it is interfacing with the dma controller direct memory access controller then these two signals are used then we have the mode select signal which is the minimum and the maximum mode selection then we have memory input output controls like we have memory input output signal which decide that whether the operation it's a memory operation or an input output operation then we have read write data enable ready signal data transfer and transmit and receive signal this is bus high enable or the status signal 7 then address latch enable so whenever any memory or input output operations are performed then these signals are used then we have the multiplexed address and the data bus ad not to ad15 and then we have the a16 to a19 address bus which is also used as the status signals s3 to s6 so all the pins on this pin diagram they are uh, categorized into various signals in this signal diagram so the description of the pins and the signal it remains the same only just uh, you have to categorize the pins in various signals okay so in this video we studied about the pin diagram and the signal diagram of the 8086 microprocessor so i hope that this topic is clear to you thank you